Hey everybody, welcome back to my house. I hope you had a great week. Do you miss me? A little? Well, I miss you. I miss you so much, I'm excited that we're gonna have an event this Wednesday, just for you and your family. Wednesday at 6.30 till eight o'clock for the next three weeks, July 15, 22nd, and 29th. Each night we're gonna have music and a devotion and a craft project for you and your whole family. So I hope you can come, but you gotta sign up because we can only have 100 people join us. It's gonna be outside and you can find more information on the City Kid Facebook page. You can click the link to sign up or in the parent email, there's a link to click to sign up there too. There's some families from church and they couldn't wait till Wednesday to say hi to you and here they are. Hi everyone, we're the Gott family. I'm Jessica. I'm Christian. And I'm Hayden. And this is our cat Gizzy. We miss you all so much and hope to see you soon. Stay safe. Hi guys, Teacher Pam here. I'm excited to welcome you today to City Kids. Yay! So, um, things I've been doing the last few months to stay busy are planting flowers, pulling weeds, hanging out around the house, and raising chickens. You can see them in the background. You can hear Elvis crowing somewhere, my rooster. He was sitting by me earlier, but he took off. Anyway, you can see the girls back there. There's Lorna and Ginger and <coughs> Elvis and Sprinkles and Buttercup, Buttercup and Buttercup, three of them. They look exactly the same and I can't tell them apart. But they're birds and they're fun. And um, speaking of birds, that reminds me of a song we sing in my Sunday school class called The Eagle Song. And we soar, we soar around the room on wings of eagles and we run and we don't get weary. And those words are actually found in the Bible. And it's a promise in Isaiah 40, 31 that says that if we keep our hearts and our minds and our eyes fixed on the Lord, then he can help us do hard things. That's right. So even though we run and run, we won't get weary. And it's going to feel like we can fly on the wings of eagles. So I love you all and miss you. And until then, remember Isaiah 40, 31. Mm, love you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Now that we've had our time to greet each other, it's time to sing. I'm really excited to start singing because I got a new song for you. Actually, I have a bunch of new songs, but I'm going to introduce one of them today. It's one we haven't done in kisses before. Are you ready? Here it is. Let's stand. Let's sing together. From time to time, I fall behind and I can't see the finish line. But Jesus came to show me.
good singing, everybody. Do you like the new song? Have your parents text me if you did. And next week, I got another new song for you. I'm excited to share it with you. Today, we're going to learn more from the book of James, chapter 2. Are you ready? How many of you have a favorite sibling? Favorite brother or sister? Well, when I was a kid, my grandpa called me his favorite grandson. Yeah, it felt really good. But you know what I would say after that? After he'd tell me I was his favorite grandson, I would say, Grandpa, I'm your only grandson. Because at the time, I was the only one. Then he had more grandsons. And then he stopped just calling me his favorite. Hmm, I forgot about that. Anyways, if you don't have a favorite sibling, you probably have a favorite friend, a best friend. We all have favorite somethings. Favorite foods, favorite movies, favorite teachers, favorite superheroes. Our Bible verse today talks about favoritism. Favoritism isn't just having a favorite, because it's okay to have favorites. Favoritism is wrong because it's when we are unfair to something because they're not our favorite. So it's not bad for me to like Captain America more than Spider-Man. But favoritism and why it's wrong is when I'm mean to Spider-Man because he's not my favorite, Captain America. Do you see the difference? James would have known all about favoritism because he grew up with Jesus. Jesus never sinned. He never did anything wrong. So it would have been really easy for Jesus to be the favorite. The favorite son, or the favorite brother, or the favorite kid at school. And James knew it was important to treat people fairly. He didn't want to be unfair. It would be wrong to be mean to James because we like Jesus more. We're supposed to love everyone. We don't always treat others that way, but we should. And the book of James has a lot to say with how we treat others. So in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 1, here's what he said. James 2, 1. My brothers and sisters, believers of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. So remember, favoritism isn't just having a favorite, but it's mistreating somebody because they aren't your favorite. Our belief in Jesus and our love for him should help us to not mistreat others for whatever reason. And in my house, I have two kids that lately are arguing a lot about who they're going to sit by because they have a favorite. And it's not me, I'll tell you that. But in James chapter 2, he tells a story about two people sitting down also. In James chapter 2, he tells a story about a rich man and a poor man. And how not to show favoritism. James said that it's evil to discriminate and give the rich man a really nice seat while making the poor man sit on the floor. The two men were treated differently because of how they looked, and that's not okay. In chapter 2, uh, verse 8, James reminds us to not show favoritism, but to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we're treating people differently because of the clothes they wear or how they look, it's wrong. We are God's children. We're all God's children. So let me ask you something. Do you love you? Because God created you, and he loves you so much. But do you love you? Because it's hard for us to love our neighbor as ourselves if we don't love ourselves. And Jesus died on the cross for you because he loves you. When we see ourselves as God's children, it's easier for us to see others as God's children too. Jesus doesn't have a favorite. He died for everybody. And because he died for everybody, he calls us to love everybody too. You up for the challenge? All right, well, thanks again for coming over. Hope you have a great week, and hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.